Hi, and welcome to the third session of the ProtoPie course. My name is Meng, and today we're gonna learn about animations, how to prepare it, how to sequence it, and we're gonna explore the animation timing. First of all, in order to simplify and focus on the animations that we're going to learn, I decided to only take the home screen and then keep the scroll, and we're only down to a single screen. You can use this template that is provided, so 3A, and then you can start from there. So when you're preparing your animations, it is very important to order your layers the way that you want to animate it, especially when you're doing a sequence animation at the start. So for example, we want to do a fade in in order. So we're going to start with balance and then do and then this one, the title and the transactions. So we start balance, do chart, subtitle, transactions. And this is easy for us to then order our animations later on. I'm going to come back to the cards in the next sessions, but in this one, we're gonna focus on these elements right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to scroll and I'm gonna set the default scroll to 350. Like this, it's always scrolled by default. Then let's take a look at trigger. Now, typically your animation is going to start when you tap on something, or when you do a long press or a drag. But in this case, you wanna start the animation when the screen is loaded, and that happens a lot. So we're gonna to go to conditional and click on start. What this means is that as soon as the screen is loaded, we're going to start this animation. So we're gonna start with balance and we're gonna click on it and now we're gonna start with opacity as an animation. And here, we're going to set the beginning of the animation first, meaning that this is the first state before the screen is loaded. So we're gonna set the duration to zero, and then we're gonna set the opacity to zero as well. So what this means is that as soon as the screen is loaded, we're gonna start with nothing in terms of opacity. And then, we're gonna do the same thing, so click on balance, and then we're gonna reset it. So resetting means that uh, it's gonna come back to whatever you have in your canvas right here. So again, it starts, starts with zero opacity, and then it's gonna do an animation to go back to the position that we see in the canvas. So now, if I refresh, you can see there's a little bit of an animation. You can make it longer. This is the timeline of the animation. So I can play with this or I can play using the inspector. So I can make it slower like this. Now we're gonna do the same for the other four. So we're gonna go to do, and here you can add a new animation in between right here or at the end. So I'm gonna click right here and set opacity. And before even changing one by one all of these animations, I can just go ahead and do each layer first. So chart, opacity, subtitle, opacity, transactions, opacity. When you're dealing with a lot of layers, this is what you wanna do. You wanna be able to select all of them at the same time and change the duration for all of them at the same time. The same with opacity. And so like this, you're saving a lot of time managing your animations. Then we're going to reset the other four layers as well. So right after reset, we're gonna add another reset for due, chart, subtitle, and then transaction. Again, we can select all of the resets and then set our duration to 0.5. And you can see that they're all animating at the same time. But now what I wanna do is to add a bit of delay. So I can select this one and I can move it like this, which is not always super precise. So what I can do is use the keyboard shortcut, shift and right arrow to add 0.1. And so this one I'm gonna do twice, three times and then four times. Now we have this really nice beginning animation that is delayed for each element afterwards. So far, we've dealt with the most basic animation, which is opacity, 
and usually we use that pretty much everywhere and we use that very often to combine with other types of animations such as move, scale, 3D and so on. So let's test it. We're gonna go to balance as the start and here after opacity I'm gonna set to scale and here I'm gonna set it to duration 0 and of course I need to set the size so Protopy is really good at telling you what part of the settings that you're missing in order to see the animation going. The scale allows you to scale to a certain width and height, or you can also set by, meaning that you can scale by uh, 10 pixel or 20 pixel or 100 pixel. And the other thing is you can set the factor, which is really useful, especially when you're dealing with something that looks like CSS, for example, which use a scale factor. So in this case, it's going to start really big by 100%, so a double its size, and you can already see the animation like this. So scale is really powerful, and unlike opacity, you can actually make a difference using the animation timing. By default, we have ease in and out. And if you wanna learn more about the differences, you can click right here, and it's gonna show you the differences in each of those. And uh, the most popular one is ease in out, meaning that at the very beginning, it's very slow, and at the end, it also slows down. For those who are more familiar with this, you can customize the cubic bezier and we can also use the spring which bounce back. So we're gonna try and do that. Back to our protopie, I'm going to select the correct reset. So the reset is the one that actually sets the timing of the animation because these ones with zero duration is simply a state. It's just the first beginning state of the animation and then the reset takes care of animating the transition between the beginning and the end. So I'm gonna select reset for balance and I'm gonna change instead of easing and out to spring. Now you're gonna see a little bounce effect with the scale animation. So now we're gonna test the other animations. So I can just turn off scale and then selecting balance yet again, we can try and rotate for example Rotate requires a angle. So first of all, we're gonna set it to duration zero, then set the rotate by to 30, for example. And now you see a little rotation at the beginning. You can change the angle to 90, for example, and it's going to bounce even more. So the more that your object is moving in terms of distance or in terms of angle and rotation, then the more you're gonna see that bounce effect. That's how the spring animation works and the other thing about spring is that you can set the tension so the bigger the number is the more it's going to uh, charge at the beginning so i can set to 500 and it's going to bounce even more because at the beginning there's a lot of tension i can set it back to 300 and the other thing is you can slower at the end by increasing the friction so if, if i set it to 30 then it's barely going to bounce at all. So 25 or 20, it's going to bounce a little bit more and 15, a lot more. All right, so we're gonna go back to rotate and here we're gonna turn this off and then we're gonna play with 3D rotate, which is really cool. And here again, it's very similar to rotate. We're gonna use an angle. So we can set it to 60, for example, and set the duration to zero. And now you can see there's a rotation, but with perspective. It's going to be even more apparent if I set it to 90, for example, and I can change the angle of the rotation. So from which direction it comes from, from the left or from the right, from the bottom, from the top. So we can play with these. You can even set it to 180. So I'm gonna set it to 90 for now. And I'm gonna stick to the 3D rotate because it's interesting. And I'm going to apply that to the rest of my layers. So I'm gonna go to do and set 3D rotate, chart. 
and then subtitle transaction and now I can just change all of them at the same time using the same rotation and voila since my reset is taking care of the delay and the spring and the timing then I didn't have to do anything else than just set the initial state so now you can see that this is the animation that we have it's a little bit slow so what we can do is change all of the resets at the same time and if we want to use spring there you go we have this really nice delayed animation and again when you're using spring it's super important to understand that the more your animation moves the more it's going to have an effect so as you can see this transaction box is really really big and therefore it's going to have more momentum when it's going to spring so i can set let's say the friction to less so i can set it to 25 and it's not as sharp additionally what i can do is you know keeping the same values for the spring i can just set the uh, 3d rotate to have a less sharp angle so i can set it to 30 for example and it's going to have sort of the same effect as you can see here while i'm prototyping my animations i want to see quick results as soon as possible and that's what allows me to tweak these animation timing as well as the type of animation i want to see and therefore create the best result for what i'm envisioning for my design so it's really important for you to play with your own design and test these animations out and see the results in real time as you do it i think you're gonna have a lot of fun so this is going to be your homework in the next session we're going to learn about drag and release so touch down touch up it's going to make your app a lot more interesting especially when you're designing for iOS 13 and the new devices which really use the gestures a lot so i'll see you in the next session